Hello everybody, welcome to my RC Plane channel. I'm James and in this video I'm going to be doing an open box review of this vintage House of Balsa 1 half A size chipmunk RC Plane kit. Now if you've been following along my channel, you'll know that recently I did the same thing with this House of Balsa Beechcraft Bonanza, the same size airplane. Now I purchased both of these kits on eBay and of course they look like they are they're they're old looking they're in old boxes they've been probably sitting around for quite some time because these kits were originally designed in the 1970s i think 1977 for these two particularly and they were pretty popular back in the 70s and 80s but as far as i know house of balsa they're still around but they're no longer making or producing their rc playing kits for sale maybe one day they'll be back into it and that would be that would be really awesome so, but anyhow, I, I purchased these off of eBay and I would encourage you if you're interested in building vintage kits or you're interested in building really any RC kit, whether it's an ARF or an, a, a, new, um, a new kit produced by like someone like, like SIG or Balsa USA and or these old kind of vintage ones, always check out eBay because sometimes you can get a pretty good deal on them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move things around and move my camera so we can take, take a look inside the box. Now one thing I wanted to mention real quick is I did bring along for this video this little Gillows or Gwillows um, balsa and tissue kit. This is a free flight rubber band powered little kit here and I'll explain to you in a few minutes why, why I brought this for this video. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. All right, let's get started on this. So once again, it's a half A class sport standoff scale kits, the two channel radio, and it's, again, it's the chipmunk. So the way these kits were designed was you basically, you use the 049, I think it says an 049, I think you can go up to like an 051, maybe somewhere like that in the, in the intended design. And you would not have a throttle, you would just use an 049 engine, and you'd start it up, and you'd put it on the runway, and you'd let it go, and it would take off, and hopefully you didn't have to try to control it when it was on the ground. So two channels for the controlling it are going to be the elevator and then also the ailerons again had no throttle and no steerable kind of um, tail wheel so what i did is in a previous build i actually built this the same kit i converted it to a four channel and i used smaller servos and i and i converted it so i had a steerable tail wheel and i had a rudder but the rudder probably wasn't that important and i also had a throttle because i've used a 0.10 os max engine on it now the specs on here Hopefully you can see it with the light. It's a 36 inch wingspan. It's 216 square inches for the wing area. Length is 28 inches. The weight is 22 to 28 ounces. Again, it's an 049 engine. And it's got like this wing loading of 14 and a half to 18 and a half ounces. I believe that when I did my kit, which is this guy right here, and I've mentioned it before, I'll bring it over here real quick. When I built this kit, I think it came in when I, when I even after adding the four channels and actually putting the bigger engine in there, I think my wing loading was pretty close to 18. It wasn't really that much over. And this plane flies really, really, really nice. So that's kind of the specs on the outside of the box. All right, so before I open up the kit, I want to take a little look at the actual chipmunk, the original plane itself. Have a little bit of history on it. I'm not an expert, so um, don't hold me to everything that I say. Hopefully I'll get this, get this right. So the reason I brought this one along, this, this little kit, was because, okay, the chipmunk was developed by the D. Havlin Company. And the original chipmunk was the DHC-1, as you can see here. And it was a military trainer that was built shortly after World War II. And the original version, like I said, was the DHC-1, and it had that kind of birdcage canopy to it. Now this plane, which is the House of Balsa version, this is the DHC-1B and it has this bubble top canopy, as you can see here. Now the DHC-1A was produced for, and it was used by a lot of, lot of different countries as a military trainer. I don't think the United States ever used it as a, as a trainer. And then the later version, of course, like I said, was the DHC-1B, which you see here. All right, so, Hopefully that made sense. But yeah, so this is a really cool little kit here. I should build this too. 
All right, as mentioned, I have I haven't opened this box yet. I got it in the I put, got it in the mail, so I'm going to go ahead and open it now, and we'll take a look. Okay. All right, so first off, you can see here that this, they do give these little inserts, and you can see this is pretty, pretty yellowed. We'll take a look at this in a few minutes, but yeah, that's got some, definitely got some yellowing there. But let me go ahead and I'll take, I'm gonna set this aside, set the top aside. And we'll take out the parts, start taking a look at it. Take a look at that in a few minutes. Here's the instructions, which we'll go over. And then here are the plans, which I'll roll out. And there should be, there used to be, it doesn't look like it's in here, a little kind of spec sheet. We saw the spec sheet on the other plane that I looked at. The Beechcraft had the spec sheet and the original plane that I built actually had the spec sheet. And it's just a little little um, eight and a half by 11 that gives the scale and a little bit of information of the original plane. I don't see it, maybe it's inside here. We can take a look real quick. Oh, there it is. All right. There we go. So there's a spec sheet. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes. This is in a lot better condition because maybe because it was rolled up inside the plans there. So let me move this to the side. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, like I did before, I will roll out the plans. Maybe I'll roll out the plans now and then we'll take the pieces out on top of the plan so we can kind of look at things together. All right, so here are the plans rolled out, and we can take a look now. Of course, it's House of Balsa, like I mentioned before, and Chipmunk, De Havilland, DHC-1. Again, it's the DHC-1B. And here is, let's start with the wing. So, of course, the wing is a typical construction. It has ribs and it has a spar. It has some balsa sheeting that goes along the front, along the leading edge. There are two blocks for the landing gear, as you can see right there. The, the wing is built in, in two halves, and then we use this, the fiberglass cloth to help kind of bond across that seam. As you can see here, the servo, the aileron servo is offset here to the left. And then there are two ailerons, one here and here obviously, and then the control linkage is a wire that goes through. It gets kind of sandwiched in between the trailing edge and the, and the main part of the wing. And then you just have these, um, we'll take a look at that in a minute, but it has these like little brass tubes that the piano wire goes into and that kind of connects everything between the aileron and then the and then the, the servo and over here we have looks like a couple profiles of some of the bulkheads or some of the formers here is the the, the firewall showing the showing the, the the engine mount location or the um yeah right here this little kind of spinner plate or spinner ring that kind of goes right in the front and it gets kind of sanded back it's like right right in here somewhere course here's a couple more profiles of the um, looking through the fuselage and looking down on the fuselage these are the formers for the canopy they go back they go back in here for the turtle deck and then the front portion of the fuselage is built up there's a bunch of doublers that you build up and then everything has to be kind of sanded down and it has this sort of like fake or this 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 um it looks like a cowl but it's not you actually kind of kind of carve that and shape it. I'll show this on, on the plan that I built recently. It also has these, these um, I guess these fillets or these that go up these, the, the wing root and you construct those using, um, you can use uh, micro balloons and they give you a little template and I'll show you that in just a minute. Of course, here's the elevator. And again, it doesn't have a rudder control. It's just basically a stiff rudder. And as I did in my previous build, I actually 
put a tail wheel on here and I added a, a rudder, rudder control. All right. So here's a profile again looking at the side of the plane. And again, you can see here's the, here's the firewall, plywood firewall back in here. Here's the little 049 engine. And this block up here is shaped and it's just glued on. It doesn't come off the top block. The bottom block does come off. There's a little um, blind nut and a screw that holds it on there. And I think a little, I think a little dowel, yeah, like right here. Again, this is one piece of wood that has to be cut and shaped. The radio, of course, goes in here. They show the, the, the control rods as being just a push rod um, using, using some kind of stock. I guess it's probably a square, one quarter inch square um, wood material. I don't know if that's in the kit or not. We'll have to check and see. And here, of course, here's a profile of the, of the wing showing the, the airfoil. And it's connected, the wing connects to the fuselage. There's a dowel right here in the front that plugs in and then it's screwed on with a little block back here, which is really, really typical. And then the landing gear is stiff. In the original plane, it's stiff. It doesn't have retractable landing gear, so that's kind of cool. And, and they also give you these kind of like these wheel pants to, to use if you want to install those. And again, the tail wheel originally is supposed to be stiff and it's not controllable. So that's the plans. And of course you can add, they have some, they do have some, some kind of scale features. It shows like a little exhaust tube you can make if you want to do that. And really, you know, for being a, for being a standoff scale plane, it actually is a pretty nice looking scale airplane. Um, it even has this little dorsal fin back in here. This little thing right here, this little fin that you see right here, it's like a rail. That's what the canopy would slide back on. So they, you know, they include in this, they include in the model, some really kind of nice scale features, as you can see here. And then you have an option here for different rudder vertical stabilizer styles. And you can kind of see here there's stock and then there's a couple because you can also kind of model this as sort of like the super chipmunk or the sport chipmunk. And it has different kind of tail profiles or, or rudder profiles. So you can cut it to kind of how you want. This one right here, I believe is the, well, this is the stock one right here. This one right here is the stock. So that's kind of how the, the original airplane was, was designed. So you have to take a look at that closely if you ever wanted to do that. So this looks, this is very yellowed. It's not a huge deal. These three pieces of, of card stock are cut and they form the cockpit area back down in here. Um, of course there is a, they show you here, there's, they have two um, panels to put in there if you want to put those in the instrument panels. Then there's a little template for the wing tips right here that are, of course, these wing tips here, because these are just going to be blocks of wood that you're going to have to cut. And then here are the templates for the wing fillets or the wing roots that you cut out. And this is really interesting how these go on. What you do is you cut these out and then you tape them. I believe you tape them onto the tape them onto the wing and then you put the fuselage down on top of that. And then you form, you use your micro balloons to kind of form that little that little wing root. Um, it's not that hard. It's kind of fun to do that, but pretty cool. So there's that information. Now this of course is that little that little um, spec sheet they give you. Let's see if I can kind of get it rolled out. This is in better condition than that other thing. And it really shows you a lot of cool detail. If you look at this closely it shows the kind of the profiles of the fuselage here. Real Canadian Air Force. They don't give you those decals you have to come up with your own decals for this and i think they they even show you here like you can have, kind of paint your own your, the, the own the insignia or the roundel and then it gives you the dimensions of the chip chipmunk also right here so you can kind of measure it and check it and i did this and i, I actually measured this chipmunk and i mentioned it before it's probably like around i think it's around a one to ten scale it's not it's not perfect and really it is actually really close to to um to a scale airplane and you really wouldn't notice. So if it's a standoff and you're looking at it from a distance, it's a great looking little airplane. And in fact, I'll bring it out again because I've mentioned this and I've shown this a while. Here's the one that I built already. And you can kind of, here's a couple features. Like of course, here's that little wing root. I mean, you can kind of see that made with, uh, made with the micro balloons. This is basically one piece of wood all the way back over to here. And then you have to cut it and shape it um, I put the landing gear, I added, you can kind of see, but I added these little 
these are basically the outer control control rods and I just cut two pieces to just kind of thicken up the landing gear to make a little make it look a little bit more scale there and in the back of course I put a little tail wheel right here you can see that hopefully and I also have the rudder right here so I I brought that kind of funky but I brought the I brought this kind of the control rod up through here and that's how I control the tail the tail wheel really it's kind of like I said I wanted to be able to control it on the ground and taxi the plane around and also again of course like I have the throttle so this is basically a four channel plane and it, and it flies it actually flies really nice and I don't know what else I can show you here but that's how I modeled this one and when I get to this one build, when I get to building this one I'm not sure if I'll do I probably won't do the same exact thing I may actually make the civilian maybe make it more like the civilian model like this okay so let me set this aside oh yeah and I got my pilots in there you can kind of see hopefully you can kind of see my little pilots I painted those guys and put them in there and of course there's the uh, I can get to it if you can see it or not you may be able to see the cockpit or the, the, the panel in there instrument panel what else oh then I have in the front here real quick I have this is my my filling my my, my engines inverted and my fuel tank is I don't know where it is I think it's back in here somewhere but I have the I basically have my my, my filler tube right there you kind of see that hopefully I just kind of stick it back in it was a fun little build so all right so let's go ahead and I'll, I'll take a look at what's in the box all the little parts so hold on let me grab that okay what I'll do is I'll just put my the box up here and I'll just pull the stuff out and I'll bring it down here so these are the wheel pants that you can cut out and glue together I didn't put them on the, the, the kit that I made. And I probably, I don't know if I would put them on this one either. They seem like they're probably not going to hang on very well, but maybe they will. But anyhow, it's something to consider. You can do that if you want. Put that over here to the side. Here is the turtle deck and the canopy. It's really nice. So this has to be cut out. You have to kind of cut, cut it out. It's kind of in the got this extra pieces on the out or this extra molding on the outside has to be cut off and you can kind of see if you look at it closely you can kind of see they have the the um it's kind of molded the frame on here this little piece looks this looks like it's a little bit yeah it's actually in pretty good con condition and this actually goes all the way to the front so it sits sits like that on here and it has to be painted so mine that i did before pull this over here this is all painted right here this is just paint painted and the front part is painted also with black spray paint and then i then i um masked off the, the canopy itself and i painted all all that right there so all right so this looks pretty good let me move this over here all right so this are these are some plywood these are the formers or the bulkheads again this is this one like the other one that I did the, the Beechcraft this shows a little bit of warping so probably what I would do is I would probably just get some new plywood material and just cut these cut these new these are these pieces here um, here's the hardware the, the hardware package and without taking everything out of there you can there's the there's the landing gear blocks there's the landing gear itself and there's a little wedge I don't know what this is for I think some of these pieces are for the cock for the um, firewall or for the engine compartment area I think this is actually the firewall right here this little guy right right there if you can see that then there's the fiberglass cloth right there and then some other hardware okay here are the this is one of the sides this is the one of the doublers it's kind of hard to see but that's one of the doublers and here's a couple of the, the ribs the center section of the wing is is made with um with plywood plywood ribs here's some sheeting balsa sheeting more sheeting I think these are the these are the wing the wing sheeting the upper and lower portions of the of the leading edge sheeting a little bit of damage on some of this here here's some more here I think these are yeah more of that here are the ribs the wing ribs here's the actually this is the um the elevator right here and then 
hard to see these things. Here are, the, here are many of the ribs, bunches of the ribs. And here's the rudder and such. Here are the sides of the fuselage, right here. Here's the bottom of the fuselage. Okay, so here's the, here's the lower block, which is this guy right here. And here is the upper block, which is this guy right there. Those need to be shaped. And then here are the, here are the wing, the wing tips come out of this piece right here. These guys are cut and shaped, the wing tips, like that. Then here's some spars and some longer stock right here. This looks pretty good. Here's a little dowel, probably for the elevator down in here. Okay, here's the aileron. This guy right here is the aileron stock. And then what else? A piece here. Here's some more of the. I think this is. Oops. I think this is the top of the, the fuselage, which is right, right here. Okay. So yeah, lots of parts. Okay, here they are. Here's the. Here are the aileron control linkages, and they give these little brass tubes on here. So it's kind of going like that, and those again are mounted right back in the. I can get that right. Oops. Something like that in there. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and put all this stuff back in the box and we'll take a look at the instructions. All right, so I'll try not to get glare on from the light lighting. So here's a little manual and the back of it's kind of cool. It has some old, some other kits that House of Also was producing. You'll probably find those on eBay if you wanted to look. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. All right, so it shows you here, kind of like it just gives you like a materials list kind of for things that are required to complete the kit. That's pretty common with, with kits. You, they don't always give you everything in them. Here's the firewall construction right here. Here's some of the doublers being being put on. Here are the side of the fuselage. So it starts out with the fuselage construction. Of course, here is the uh, some of the formers. Grab my glasses. Okay. And here it looks really close. You can kind of see the fuselage kind of coming together right there. I won't look at everything. But you're going to hear the construction of the fuselage continued back in here. Landing gear blocks, kind of putting the tail section together. Here's the engine compartment with the engine being installed. That's again, that's the 049. It looks like they're showing you right here. Let's see here. It's a nice little manual. It's got nice um, photographs and really good instructions showing you every step of the way. Really, really nice. Here's the front blocks being fitted. Here's the fuselage continued. Here's the turtle deck kind of being constructed, the cockpit area right here. Kind of a shadow. Gotta make sure you can see that. All right, so here's the, again, here's the cockpit. Here's the instrument panels right there. Oops. And here's the cockpit with two of the pilots. You can kind of see here. Move on to the tail section. Here they're showing the wheel pants being constructed. I mean, these are really good kits, so I'm sure these probably hold on pretty well. I think they give you a little bracket to kind of screw into there and stuff, so that's probably okay. Here's the wheels. Now they're moving on to the wing construction here. Here are the landing gear blocks right there. Of course, here's the ribs and the spar, the wing spar, the leading, the trailing edge and the leading edge sheeting. And then they're here they show the dihedral being put on here, building the dihedral into the wing. And then just some more features. Here's the canopy. So then it's masked off. And I think what they did is they actually didn't cover in this in this um, instructions. 
they don't use a covering they just they painted it they painted it. it's all wood so they finish it off with and they paint it so that's that's pretty that's pretty cool and of course they show some of the decals none of this is included in the kit so they have to find that separately but yeah I mean that's a great looking little little model right there some electronics going in and there's the old setup of the showing the aileron servo some of the electronics and then I guess here's again some of the other kits that they have for sale they have this p51 mustang oops oops right here p51 mustang the messerschmitt aero cobra glider i actually built the mustang a while back okay so that's it so it's a really nice little instruction manual all right, everybody. Well, thanks for taking a look at this kit with me. I hope that was enjoyable, kind of going through the parts and checking things out. It definitely is an old kit. It's been sitting around for some time in somebody's storage, and it does have some damage, has a little bit of damaged wood. Things are kind of a little bit yellow, but overall it's in pretty good shape, and I think it would be a nice build. I don't know when I'm going to get to it. I have some other projects that, are, that I want to do. And I am continuing with the Balsa USA Smoothie build, so join me for that, and hopefully I'll have that plane in the air soon. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching my channel, and we'll see you next time.